Right, okay, so second session of pastels. So I bought a couple of different um, old soft pastel pieces of mine. And I bought these in particular because I wanted to um, show you the difference between soft blending, which we're often is told is the good thing to do, but it depends on the picture, and more kind of sharper defined use of pastels where things are more defined. Um, obviously, I've got a reflection there in the water, which is a lot softer, but the tendency is to think that if you're doing shiny objects you need to do a lot of soft blending whereas actually if you look at a lot of the pictures there are some quite sharp and defined areas so i thought if you wanted to draw your own um shiny object today a good place to do to start would be to draw the outline in pencil whether you're doing that from a picture that's been printed out which is obviously easier or drawing from real life, which is a bit more of a challenge. Um, if you are drawing from a picture, you can use the grid system, but I do think it would be really good to draw it upside down. This is something we've spoken about before. Oh, yeah. yeah, because honestly, it's, it's easier than you think because if you have that in front of you and then you draw it upside down, you are only actually reading the shapes you're reading your brain is just looking at that as shapes it's not looking at it as oh it's a kettle as a preconceived yeah. idea. and the preconceived ideas you don't realize how subconsciously they hinder because you think oh the spout comes out more you know you don't think that consciously yeah. but your brain does and it all yeah. get confused so I, I would like us to try and draw it upside down and even if we can shade it upside down um, once you've got your outline, the next thing to do is to actually pencil on your darker areas. So just kind of very lightly, just kind of section off where your highlights are, where your mid-tones are and where your really dark tones are. So you kind of section it, sectioning it into three different zones. So your very light, your medium, and then you're dark. And that's gonna prevent you from putting too much pastel down in the lighter areas. So you can just make sure, I mean, you don't have to do that, but if you're kind of newer to soft pastels, it just can help. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I was gonna say is, when you're doing the very lightest tones, um, you want those to be, like I said, quite sharp and precise. And soft pastels are actually made to be broken. Now, I bought a new set recently. You should have seen how broken my old ones were. It was atrocious, so I just thought I'm going to buy some new ones for this. But um, you can break them up to get a really sharp point on so you can get the sharpness of line and also the the reflections are very often super defined shapes so if it's a reflection of an object you can see it's a super defined shape like a rectangle or you know you can get all different sort of geometric shapes in there as well mm -hmm. so definitely worth breaking your pastels down to achieve that the other thing that you might want to play with today because we haven't we didn't use any fixative last time um, obviously, just be careful because it is an aerosol. Um, but it's a controversial idea because some soft pastel artists are against this and some are very much for it. But you can use your fixative before your pastel. And some soft pastel artists will say that that is so much better <coughs> It gives them a grounding. It gives them sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, it gives them it gives them a little bit of texture to, you know, to, for it to grip on with. Whereas if you if you just do it on the paper, it's a little bit smoother. So they they find that putting the fixative on first. So that's that's um, no fixative and that's fixative. So it's just. A little bit more grippy and it just means it sticks to it better whereas other soft pastel artists say they don't like that because they want it to be smoother 
I'm sorry, I've sat Laura off. I'm sorry, Laura. <laughs> um, yeah, and then what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, that's. I suppose it's pretty much that, really. If you can, you spray as you go along. Yes. You, yeah. So, yeah. And then, can, then is it still okay to put? Can you still put pastel on top? Of, of oh the yes, things? absolutely, absolutely, that. absolutely. Okay. So, let's say I've done this section in white but i've gone I've, I've decided i don't want that white there anymore now so am i okay to spray this over this <laughs> it wasn't that okay um but i if i if i'm not happy with that area i can spray it fix it and then i can put pastel over the top so don't know if you remember last week i said if you make a mistake you've got two options one is you could rub that out 